we're going to look at how to open a business checking account for sole proprietors. And there are a few good reasons to have a business checking account, even if you're just starting out. One reason is that the IRS wants to know the business is real. Um, this can apply especially to those running a business from their home, um, an online business, and they're just starting out. So one way to establish that the business is real is to have a checking account under that business name. And to open a business account for sole proprietor, which is what a lot of single person businesses start out as, one way to do that to establish validity is to open the business checking account. And there, right now, one of the best deals I know of for opening the account is with Chase, where they require a $1,500 minimum uh, amount in the account to avoid any fees. And to open the account, you do have to go into the bank physically because of the Patriot Act. And when you go into the bank, one of the documents you're going to need is a fictitious name statement or it may be called a trade name. It kind of depends on where you're getting it, what, um, how they name it in your state and your county. So, for example, in my county, I go to the county administration building, and the fictitious name statement is what I get. It's called the Office of the Recorder, and you just go in there and pay a small fee, and they'll give you a document. And there's someone, a notary on staff there that can notarize the document, so make sure it is notarized. And then you will bring that to the bank, along with your ID, of course. And um, at Chase, at least, you don't need to have the minimum amount on hand that day, just as long as it's deposited before the end of the first 30, 30 days and uh, just check with the person that's helping you open the account to make sure when that deadline might be if you want to avoid any of the fees. So again, bring the fictitious name statement to the bank and deposit within a month of opening to avoid the minimum fee. Another thing that you can do while you're opening um, the checking account and getting documents together is apply for an employee identification number for that business. And if you just do a Google search for IRS business, E-I-N, you should find an, the irs.gov website, a link there that you can apply for this number. And this is similar to a social security number for a person. But rather than giving out your social security number everywhere, you can give out the E-I-N when you are doing things under that business name. So for example, um, if you're, I know, with um, Audible, um, the ADX exchange where you put together audio books for any ebooks or paperback books that you've created, one option is to use your social security number. And then there's another, if you have an EIN, you can use that instead. And when you're opening an account with PayPal, you can open a business account under this business name and then just link your new business checking account to the PayPal account. And I mentioned before that having a business account for the new business helps establish validity. And there's some other good reasons to have that business account. Another one is commingling of funds, which means you're not having business funds deposited into your personal account. They're going into this business account. They're remaining separate. So that's another good validity for real business. Because if they were all mixed in together, rather than being separate, then it's much harder to say it's, it's a real business. But there are good accounting reasons for doing that as well. So those are just um, quick steps of how you can open a checking account, a business checking account for a new sole proprietor. And if you would like more great business tips like this, just visit bitesizebschool.com. Thank you for watching.